Up, up, and away, film buffs. It's Straight Shooter here at Team Sound Studios. And, of course, I'm here to do another episode of How I See It. Today's spoiler review will be of Superman Red Sun. So, it's part of the DC Animated Universe. And DC has been making this string of movies that aren't necessarily all connected, but they're all part of the universe. Like, you had Flashpoint... There was recently Justice League Dark, and a sequel actually just came out. And they had The Killing Joke, and now they have this movie, which is called Superman Red Sun. I rented it because, you know, you can't go to the movies now. <laughs> or you couldn't before. A lot of movie theaters are still closed, but you can go to the drive-in if you can find a drive-in near you. But hopefully movie theaters will open again soon. Uh, Superman Red Sun probably had some decent voice actors in it. And Mark Millar wrote the story, so that was interesting to know off the bat. Jason Isaacs plays Supes, or I'm sorry, Superman, but those of us in the know call him Supes. Amy Acker played Lois Lane, and Tara Strong actually played a young Clark Kent, which is also interesting. Tara Strong has been in the voice acting game for so long, and she's such an iconic name. It's an interesting premise. It's like, what if Superman grew up in Russia, and instead of being like an all-American hero, he was a Russian hero. That was the country that he represented. He even had a Russian accent. Lex Luthor was a good guy in the movie. <laughs> he was with Lois Lane. And then you had Batman. There was a story about Batman as a young kid, obviously Bruce Wayne. Superman failed to help them. He was being enslaved by these people that wanted him to work, him and a bunch of, of other kids. Uh, Superman didn't know about it. But he blames Superman for not taking action. There is a big fight between them. And instead of admitting defeat, Batman basically blew himself up. So, And he had a Russian accent too. <laughs> so a, a lot of the movie takes place in Russia. I mean, they do go to America. At the end of the movie, Superman finds out that the Russian leaders are not good people. Stalin is one of them. He overthrows the government starts to make change in the government, rebuild the relationship between them and the U.S. and all that stuff. So that was the basic premise of the movie. It was decent, if not a little bit weird. Uh, I don't recommend this movie to casual DC movie watchers. Like, if what you're familiar with is like, you know, the Batman Superman, oh, look at that. <laughs> and the other DC movies and you're not into so much the graphic novels and the offshoots, then I probably wouldn't recommend this for you because you would probably find it a little bit weird and off-putting. But, you know, it was a good way to kill some time and watch something uh, new in the time of quarantine and stuff like that. I enjoyed it for what it was. I don't know if I feel the need to go back and watch it again. But it was something. So how I see it, what would I give the movie? I'd say I think it earned a B- minus from me. Yeah. Not just average, not very good, but somewhere in the middle of those. You know, I guess I'm rolling right through these today. I've got one more for you. And stay tuned, if you will. Music